the precipice we're at, and if you disagree that we're on the verge of what could be a World War III or financial collapse with QE Unlimited, and then get into what's happened with the ambassador, the rioting, the jihadis, that they admit our government runs. Because if Obama put all the al-Qaeda in, why now are they turning against him? I mean, this is very complex. It's making my head spin. Webster, Dr. Tarpley, go ahead. Why don't we just proceed methodically and, and we can start with the attempted coup d'etat inside the United States and then we can see what the, what the ramifications might be in, in terms of uh, October. The first thing to understand is the agency that's making the Middle East blow up is the Romney campaign. The Romney campaign in the broadest sense. And of course, the, the Romney campaign doesn't just mean, you know, this little clique of people in Boston. It means the entire complex of forces that want Romney in and Obama out. Now, in order to understand this, we've got to start with this CIA Mormon mafia. There's, it's a faction in the CIA. It's a faction in the FBI. It's known the Mormons send the, uh, the young men overseas for two years to be missionaries. They learn foreign languages. They come back. They go right into the CIA. And they had a protector in high places. For many years, this entire establishment was dominated by Henry Kissinger. But Henry Kissinger had a right-hand man, and that's Brent Scowcroft. And Brent Scowcroft was a top Mormon. So using this uh, policy that they have of promoting their own uh, people, mutual admiration society, it's kind of like the neocons, the, the upper reaches of the U.S. Uh, national security bu bureaucracy are full of Mormons. And they realize that they want Romney because that will allow them to complete their careers at the highest possible level and have more power than they could have any other way. So CIA Mormon Mafia. Now, merged with that, as I've tried to point out, are the neocons. The neocons uh, that were with Bush Cheney, some of them are more or less in the shadows. We got a whole new group of neocons. Uh, John Bolton is probably the one element of continuity, but we've got Dan Senior, we've got Robert Joseph, we've got Robert Kagan. Um, we got a lot of these people, right? It's a whole different clique of neocons that want to want to get these posts. I call your attention to John Bolton, right? The guy with the mustache looks kind of like a walrus. You've seen him on TV. The guy who has it? very interesting uh, admitted uh, divorce papers. I don't know about that, but he he he's the big hater of the United Nations, right? He's built his career as being UN ambassador and saying that he hated it. He couldn't get confirmed by the Senate. Couldn't get confirmed by the U.S. Senate to be U.N. ambassador. All right, so this is one, one, one group. Now, separate from this, but, but allied, is, of course, Netanyahu and the Likud. And uh, what we've had in this past week is this huge intervention by Netanyahu into U.S. politics in favor of Romney. Remember, Romney and Netanyahu are joined at the hip. They have been closest buddies since 1976, at the Boston Consulting Group when they sat together in the same cubicle. It's been an alliance all these years. BB gives Mitt advice about politics. Mitt gives BB advice about finance and how to design sanctions and so forth. And you saw um, Netanyahu coming out saying, you cannot give us a red light because you don't have a red line. So the United States is supposed to commit to war under some future eventuality uh, that would be unconstitutional, right? Because, you you know, we do have this question of the Congress, right? So Netanyahu also, he doesn't have a red line. He has never said under what circumstances he would strike. So Netanyahu wants the U.S. to be more Israeli than the Israelis, to be all the way out in front on this crazy idea of attacking Iran. We also had the deputy head of the Israeli Knesset on Morning Joe on MSNBC. Well, I'll tell you what, let me just stop you. I want to tell all the Calling good old boys. Calling for immediate war. Calling for sure, immediate Webster. war. You got to let me you got to let me finish the No, no, I will, but I just want to add for all the good old boys that want to, you know, start a war and think it's fun. I hope they enjoy $10 a gallon gas if the Strait of Hormuz gets closed. Go ahead. Yeah, and of course it's it's uh, the sky's the limit with this stuff. So we've got the Mormon mafia. We've got the 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 neocons having joined the 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 Romney campaign. Uh You've also got to figure that the Saudis are in on this. I think the Saudis would rather have uh, Obama out, Romney in. Uh, the importance of them is that they're the paymasters of these of these terrorist uh, groups, right? The Al Qaeda groups, the Wahhabite. They're groups, the handlers. The Salafis. They're the handlers, but they're also the, the guys who pay, right? Along with Qatar and with the United Arab Emirates and the rest of these reactionary monarchies in the Gulf. So, what did they do? 
There are two. There are a number of sides to this thing. It's it's a multi pronged faction converging on this, and they've got intersecting um, operations. Maybe we should start with this film. Now, the film is not the cause, but the film is the public relations cover. It's a kind of uh, atmospheric that allows people to think they understand what's going on. So this is now the, the, the film, uh, The Desert Warriors, and then it became The Innocence of uh, Bin Laden, and then it became The Innocence of Muslims. And it's uh, 15 or so minutes of, of, of garbage, right? It's scurrilous. It's Stay there. We're going to come right back, Webster. And we, we've got a break, hard break here for news. When we come back, we'll look at this. By the way, Webster Tarpley wrote the unauthorized biography on Obama. To be clear, he doesn't like Obama. This is not a political hack up here. See, our love of the truth, our love of what's really going on, that comes first. You're not going to hear this anywhere else, which is kind of scary. Uh, this is really amazing stuff we're watching happen. We'll be back. Arms race, basically, uh, that they are the ones behind all this unrest. Well, then Obama sure fell into their trap because Obama is the one, the Peace Prize winner, that bombed Libya and is now using al-Qaeda to attack Syria. And Webster's been to both countries under bombardment. Webster has had a lot of courage to do that. So it really shows you that once you get into all this cloak and dagger stuff, basically the ruling class here is so reckless and so amoral that they're biting themselves in the you-know-what. I mean, it really comes to a point where Hitler turns east towards Russia. Napoleon does it. Other empires go to Afghanistan to die. It shows a hubris, a contempt. Webster, I know you want to walk through the continuum of all this. We have your article, October Surprise to Carterize. Explain that. Obama, again, October Surprise to Carterize Obama, up at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com right now, along with all the other insane news. But you can see the embassies getting attacked, the American flags getting burned, uh, the uh, and, and this cover of, oh, it's this film, even though this started before that even got hyped up. Clearly, this is being uh, orchestrated to try to do just like 1980, uh, where oh, the you know the Muslims respected Mitt Romney when he you know when he gets in they'll stand down. And again, the whole thing staged. I'm not supporting Obama either. I know that uh, you haven't been an Obama supporter. The point is, this could lead to World War III, as every mainline analyst is saying. Even the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Dempsey, who's been pro-war in the past, came out and said, if Israel attacks, we're not involved and we're not helping. That's a serious message. So now this is a way to prod the U.S. into action. Um, I mean, at least that's what it seems like. So you've laid out some of the pieces here. Uh, tell us what the game plan is from all your sources there in D.C., where you live there uh, next to D.C. in Maryland, and where you see this going and what the larger strategy is to strike Iran. Is it purely political or is Israel really worried about nuclear weapons? The essence of the strategy right now is to put Romney in the White House and then Netanyahu gets everything he wants with war or without war. A lot of the war talk right now is a hype to try to get people to stampede in the direction of Romney. But let me just go back. This film, okay, the film that we started to talk about, the key guy in the, in the group of people around that film is this guy, Nasrallah. Nasrallah, the Coptic Christian. And he leads you directly into the so-called Islamophobia network. It leads to a group of people that includes Pamela Geller. It's an organization called Stop Islamization of uh, America Now. There's one called Stop the Islamization of Europe Now. There's Stop the Islamization of All Nations Now. It's an international network. They've got that guy, Geert Wilders from Holland, uh, uh, you know, Islamophobic race baiter. But you go from Nasrallah to this Islamophobia network. And who do you find in the middle of the Islamophobia network? John Bolton, top neocon and likely Secretary of State in a Romney administration. Sure, so, all this goes without saying, Webster, that, well, I don't know that it's a it cartoon. I mean, it's, a, it's just like the Muhammad cartoons put out by the neocons and the media covers it so the, so, so the Muslims burn down half of Europe so they have a pretext to then invade more. Four. Bolton spoke on WMAL radio here in Washington this week. Here's Politico. And he says, I come back to Tehran in 1979. If we're not careful here, we're going to see a repetition of that crisis, which was, of course, a major factor in contributing to the destruction of the Jimmy Carter administration. So it's clear what they want to do.
They've been they've been managing Obama on a Carter uh, plan up to now, right? The trilaterals, the Bilderbergs, all these people, Wall Street. And now they want to get him out. And in order to get him out, what do you need? Well, what got Carter out? A hostage crisis and an October surprise. In the case of uh, of the October surprise, it was to prevent Carter from freeing the hostages, right? The famous negotiations of George H.W. Bush, Bush the elder, talking to the mullahs in, in Iran, telling them, don't free any hostages, deal with us later on. I think they, they learned to regret this. So there is no doubt that the film is essentially a, a production of the Romney campaign. Now let's go to the death of the ambassador, right? This, this Arabist uh, ambassador, new Arabic, new, new French, this is J. Christopher Stevens. Why would he be killed? Well, first of all, you get uh, many signals of a, an inside job, right? He was, according to the things I've seen, he was not at the actual consulate. He was over at a safe house nearby, which should not have been known to the people attacking the, uh, the consulate, whatever that was. But he, it was known. And they began attacking with mortars, right? People have talked about the professional, coordinated a uh, high level quality of the attack on the safe house, which eventually killed Ambassador Stevens. Um, who killed him? Well, the indications coming out of Libya, is, of course, it was planned and it was carried out by an organization called Ansar al Sharia. And the head of that is a guy called Kumu, Q U M U, uh, M U, Kumu. So this guy, Kumu, is a graduate of the Guantanamo Bay training school, because that's what's going on in Guantanamo now. Guantanamo, one of the reasons Obama couldn't close it, it's used for training because they let these people out after they've been carefully prepared to do what they want to do. There was this guy, Shiri, was let out. He created Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. He's now, I think, been killed a couple of weeks no, ago. No, it's a training camp under the cover. A training camp. So Kumu is a CIA asset. And Kumu then goes and kills the U.S. ambassador. Now, that's where I'd say call the Mormon mafia and ask them what's going on with that. Right? Why is that? Why is a CIA asset killing a U.S. ambassador? Right. Why did they Do you agree him? with Pachinik, Dr. Pachinik, that it was Israel, uh, the uh, Likudniks with Saudi Arabian intelligence? Because w w why no, is I'm telling you, it's the CIA Mormon mafia. Let's get right to the heart of the matter. Without the CIA, the CIA ran that guy. He, he was trained in Guantanamo to do what the CIA wanted. Always beware these people who are telling you, oh, blame somebody else. Blame somebody, you know, blame somebody. Uh, uh, Got it. All right, but let, let's talk about, hold on, Webster. Webster, let's talk about, uh, uh, let's talk about then Obama. Why is he having the ambassador go out on TV and say, oh, this wasn't coordinated. It was a few protesters. Uh, you know, and Obama called people and everything's fine now. Why is Obama playing in to the lie then? Well, o Obama, of course, is a feckless uh, puppet, right? Obama's a, a, a Wall Street puppet. I think Wa Obama has figured out by now that his former patrons and masters are, have decided to dump him. That That's what makes this moment so interesting. It's a little bit like uh, Harry Truman in 1948, right? The reactionary Wall Street people wanted to dump him, but somehow he was able to to stay on. So th th I think people have to go. Right. Give us big people. picture. Where is it all? Where is it all headed? And I mean, the intel we're getting is it's headed. It's headed towards a seizure of power by Romney and the neocons. Now, what does that mean? It means another reversal of the field. Right. Remember, we had Bush, Cheney, neocons, war in all directions, bomb them, invade them. Rivers of blood for the U.S., you know, tremendous expenditures. And then we had Obama, and Obama says, no, I do it all with color revolutions. I do it all cheaply. He has drones. He has special forces. He did have the one, the one uh, uh, bomb. That's the Pentagon the model. That's why the Pentagon likes Obama. Uh, the divine plan. It's a CIA plan. CIA. It's a guy called Divine. So it's not the divine plan in the sense of God, but it's D-E-V-I-N-E. -E, and this is, this is what they're carrying out. Now, the neocons. Which is Brzezinski. Says, the neocons say that's not good enough. We want to start, you know, smashing more people. And they also say the Russians and the Chinese continue to defy us. We just had uh, 30 countries meeting in Tehran as friends of Syria. We just had 130, 140 countries meeting in Tehran. They're saying their strategy isn't working. So the idea would be to reverse the field and go back to a 
warlike, aggressive foreign policy, and for that they would like Romney and the neocons, and Secretary of State John Bolton, who's got his fingers in this movie somehow. Yes, absolutely. Now let's talk about where all this goes, though, with the Iran strike. I mean, they don't have the police running around digging in for World War III for nothing. Thing is mashed, okay? So they're getting ready. With the backdrop is the world financial meltdown and the banks looting everybody. Webster, we got about 10 minutes left. You got the floor to take us out. Get, pull back. Give us the big picture here. Where is all this going? How serious is the Iran strike threat? What should we expect if there is that strike? Well, just remember, it, the, the Iran strike uh, would be best conducted from the point of view of the ruling class by Romney with the neocon administration. Now, there is the problem of uh, Obama right now that they'd like to get rid of. Um, one of the problems in their way is that the Romney campaign is so stupid, so bungling and so inept. They, they could have come out of this week with a big advantage. And I don't I'm not sure they've come out with any. The, the, the hope that they have is that they'll make up for it in coming weeks. When this stuff began to happen, when you had the demonstration at the U.S. Embassy in Cairo, Egypt, and then you had the killing of a, a, a consular official, as they heard it, uh, in in uh, Benghazi, Libya, in the, the, the uh, terror corridor, right, the Benghazi Derna Tobruk terror corridor. That's when Romney decided to shoot his mouth off, right? He, he had said, oh, 9-11, I won't say anything. I'll have an embargo. Uh, but he couldn't, he couldn't restrain himself because Romney had written a book called No Apologies. And he'd, obviously the neocons had ghostwritten the book for him, right? It's the Republican talking point that Obama apologizes all the time. There's no, it's not really clear that that's true. But oh, this was something uh, uh, Romney was Pavlovian dog trained to react to this. So as soon as somebody said, uh, we regret or, you know, we don't believe in this, Obama, see, uh, uh, Romney seized on that and said, all right, you're apologizing. So he had to put out this this very badly timed uh, press release. Right. And there is a question with Romney, even with the ruling class on his side. Can he get himself elected? Right. Because he's so he's such a bungler now. Or let me add this point. I've got to ask this. We'll talk about it more tomorrow. Could the Obama controlling faction of the globalist, could they go ahead and launch the war or, or authorize Israel to as their own October surprise? I see it more of two camps fighting over who gets to launch the war and be the hero. There is this question, right? There's, there is the complication of the rally round effect. In other words, the, the, the neocons... I think uh, they've, they've shown their political stupidity repeatedly in practice. And, and Netanyahu, in terms of international politics, has shown how stupid he is. But the, the point is, if you have a big international crisis, uh, most Americans will rally around the president, whoever that is. And you can see that even under Carter, right? Uh, Carter, when you had the uh, Desert One, right, the failed attempt to rescue the hostages uh, in the spring of 1980, Carter got a bounce out of that that helped him win the Democratic primaries against Teddy Kennedy. So they're playing with something which is which is a problem for them. But I think underneath it, it's not so much the election uh, that they're worried about right now, although they, they want to win the election for Romney. It's how could you get Obama to endorse an attack? Uh, you have to stampede him. And the idea with that is the main the big danger of the Israeli attack on Iran or or maybe Somebody attacking Syria, right? Maybe some European country, uh, NATO country, right? Maybe France, something like this, attacking Syria. This could then be used to browbeat Obama and, and get him to do things that I don't think he wants to do, not because he's a patriot, but because of his, his very narrow interest in, in staying in power and not screwing up his relations with his own base. So if you're going to have an attack and you want to stampede Obama, you got to do that in the last week, 10 days, two weeks, maybe before the election so that you can tell Obama, if you don't join in this attack, you'll be denounced as a traitor. I agree. And, 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 and th you. the reason I raise this analysis is that's what I see happening here. The minute it started, it's two way. And I agree it's CIA or a faction that's neocon connected in the final equation that did do this with with command and control and handling by the Saudis, as you said. So in a way, you do agree with Pachinik, but, but correct me if I'm wrong. The the issue here is that they've got to stampede the kind of Chicago mafia Clintonista arm into 
politically not being able to deal with burning American flags, embassies attacked, U.S. troops killed, ambassador killed. And so the CIA is in control of that al-Qaeda network they use to take over Libya and now part of Syria. And so they can, they're in control. They're like, hey, Obama, we just had this network you know, uh, uh, attack some of your holdings, we're going to blame you now for not responding. So it is clear who's running this channel. The question is, is it going well for those factions? Will they now double down and intensify the destabilization program? Well, as I say, the, the ineptitude and bungling of Romney is uh, is right now a factor in world history on, in its own right. That he, he just, his obvious play this past week was to shut up don't say anything and let Obama take the heat for what's happening, right? Because everybody would then turn around and blame uh, Obama. But Romney had to get himself in the middle of it, and, and half the Republicans then then turned against him. But again, these are not the, the, the main things. I think the idea is to create hysteria. Now, you're, you're talking about these police chiefs and others being told that something big is going to happen. Consider this. Uh, in uh, recent world history, we have the so-called pre-Munich plot, right, that that Chamberlain wanted to appease Hitler. He wanted to give Hitler everything he wanted. And uh, in the various series of meetings that we, we think of as the Munich uh, process, right, the Munich sellout, there were three, three meetings at least. Got a minute uh, and a half Hitler. left. In the middle of all this, Chamberlain creates this hysteria, right? Chamberlain wants to sell out to Hitler. So he has start digging trenches in the park, give everybody a gas mask, convince them that war is at hand. And then they'll they'll support whatever you do. Now, it, it ca could be that this intelligence agency faction. And again, I no, 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 I agree with you. They're always mafia. telling they're always telling people that, 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 you know, that this is coming. It's just I've never seen this level of chatter. Plus, B-1 bombers, B-2 bombers, 25 nations, fleets massing while the dollar right. begins to implode. I mean, Webster. So you're saying you're not worried about an Iran strike. Oh, I'm worried. I'm worried about a serious strike, perhaps even more. I, I think the serious strike would have to be the prelude to the Iran strike. Sure. I I think that's yeah. that's the one that's that's more on the on the got to take it out first. And you were just in Syria recently. We're going to talk about <laughs> this tomorrow, Webster. Amazing. Uh, I have to say, I agree with your analysis uh, from all of my research. This is a very dangerous time because I think the ruling class is even fighting with each other. And, you know, it's good to have separation of powers. But, man, this is this is crazy. Uh, what is the Plus, time? Of course, you've got the, you've got this ongoing financial collapse in the background, right? You've got. You, 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 you always have to figure that, you know, the the biggest uh, danger at any point in the year is this September, October period, right? The transition from the third quarter to the fourth quarter because of all the traditional payment deadlines and everything together with that. So we've got Spain uh, on the brink, right? These Spanish uh, uh, states, right? Catalonia, Andalusia going bankrupt. Uh, Draghi saying that he's going to provide uh, support for the bonds, but only if you have uh, uh, agree to the IMF conditionalities. Yeah, and now we've got this, yeah. uh, the QE3. The QE3 would have been a help to Obama, but I think it's coming too late for Obama. So I, I still think that the ruling class is in favor of Romney, not Obama. And that becomes a very important... Well, sure, it shows how petty they are that as soon as Romney attacked Bernanke and said he would get rid of him, Bernanke then did the QE Unlimited. We're going to talk about it tomorrow, Webster, in depth. We'll start tomorrow on the financial situation. Uh, 11 a.m. Central tomorrow, Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.tv, Tarpley.net's your website. Thank you so much, Webster. And thank you to all the listeners for listening and taking action. Good job.